I'll call the meeting to order at 6.32. We have any additions to the agenda? Yeah. Yeah. Listers, errors, and emissions. What? And VLCT passive membership renewal. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. right. Anything else? Scott, do you have any additions? I do not. Oh, good. More comments. All right. Uh, review of minutes September 18th. Um, I noticed that Paul Earl was not in attendance for the conversation with the funding request study committee. I don't know if that was relevant, but as he's listed, it, it appears that he was there from the oh, minutes. good catch. Yes. It's always relevant if it's not accurate, the minutes are not accurate. Okay. I'm saying. So who are we? Are, are you going to be making yeah, the I okay? Okay. So I have a couple of things, um, one small, one big. Um, top of page two, and I would only say this if, since it's paraphrasing me, I do not use the word impact as a verb. <laughs> uh, uh, so I would like that to be changed to two examples of organizations affected by flooding. Oh, wow. Is that the big change? That's a little change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, the, the big change is that uh, the motion in that same section does not reflect the motion that that uh, I actually made and that we passed. And I went back and double checked on the video to make sure that I have it exactly as it was. And uh, what we actually passed was I moved to authorize the town administrator and I'll email this to you, Gina, oh. the town administrator and the town treasurer to work with Downstreet, um, their name, Downstreet Housing and Community Development, to assign the balance of the revolving loan fund to Downstreet to be used at least in the first three years for loans and grants for affordable housing in East Montpelier. So we, we passed it with some strings on it, um, you know, whether yes. right. whether we'll be successful in getting those strings formalized or not, I don't know, but the, that's we what we tried to do, yes. And and then any final agreement on that will come back to us for, for approval, I assume. Is that correct, Gina? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Right. Anybody else have? Any corrections or anything else they want to change? No? I guess we need a vote. Um, I Do we have a second? A second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. All right. So let's see. Public comment. Nada? I, I can Public make a comment. comment. This is Deb Fillion. Can yeah. you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, I see they've got a probable executive sessions coming up three in a row. If you want to do the listers or an emission, I realize it's an addition to the agenda, so it doesn't have to come up at the beginning. But if you want to get that out of the way, I could do that right now, and then I would could sign off. Sure. Let's do it. So, we, what was done in the error on that merger? What happened is Benjamin McCall owns property on Stony Corners. And yeah. Benjamin, Benjamin McCall owns property on Pine Ridge. The two have never touched each other, so they weren't contiguous. And then he did a prop, he did a boundary adjustment with a neighbor so that he created a strip of land that does connect the two. And we saw that and thought, oh, now they're all under contiguous ownership, so we made it all one parcel without realizing that. In one case, he owns the first with his wife and the second with his mother. So you need both owners to be the same for it to be a contiguous parcel under common ownership. So that was an error that we didn't realize that Birgit and Linda weren't the same person. Yeah. So they need, they need to be separated again. They're not under contiguous ownership. Yeah. Sounds good. I know where it is. So. Yep. Yeah. So that was pretty minor, but. Yeah, that was just a boo-boo. Does anybody have any questions? Like no. That? no. Just the name. Mm -hmm. 
Do you, do you, you, have, you, have, you have the original document there that does require signatures yeah. on the select board number. I don't know if, if you, you need a If you, you we just basically okay. need to sign. I guess yeah, then you would need that. Oh, we'll sign it back here. Yeah, it's on the back. Select board. All right. And I believe we need the date, which is 10 to 10 to. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Deb. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay, so I took care of that. 640 board work session to discuss zoning administrator interview questions. Potential executive session. <clears throat> I don't think we have to go on executive sessions. Do we? Um, is there a reason why concerned? Don't have to. We don't have I mean, to. It's um it's yeah. customary to go into an executive session uh around hiring, uh, so that we can freely speak about what we want to ask the person without them finding out about it ahead of time. And we can also freely speak about what we know about the person and uh, how we want to direct questions to expand upon that knowledge. Well, we're just going to go with a written question. Maybe. Well, you but don't have to. We don't, don't have to. to. Well, no. well, if you want to go to an executive session, go ahead. I mean, we, we've got executive sessions coming up anyway. So I think it's just. We're pushing on to the end. Um, well, we can't really do uh, I assume that we have a candidate waiting for us. Not yet. I, no. I don't know if this matters. We have not seen her come in. To okay. Assist her. No. Oh, it's supposed to be an interview. Mm -hmm. 645. Mm hmm. Well, that's okay. We'll just go in executive yeah. session now because we're going to have to be in executive session with the interview and we have to do it on the... Um, we're coming out of it. executive session at 7.40. I move to authorize the town administrator to offer the candidate the zoning administrator position. I will second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. Oh, so the next item on our agenda is discussion with rec board. Consideration of new bank account for recreation board payments via Square. Could I make sure that both of you are signed in? Thank you. Is there a soccer game tonight? There's a big crowd. Is that what's there was. There was. Yeah. Great. There's a huge crowd. Yeah, we have great attendance. Cool. I think, Michelle, is that you on the phone? I think. Somebody's on the phone. I see She's the phone. on. She may be on mute. Or she is on mute, but. So what's the opening salvo here, so to speak? Yeah, um, so I'm Nick Vandenberg. I'm recently joined the recreation board. And um, so essentially we have a couple items that we're um, looking for your support. And one is to um, adopt a draft uh, cash receipts policy that will be applicable for the business of the recreation board. Um, and then sort of the second piece would be to approve the opening of an additional bank account um, that would be for a receipt of recreation board funds for you know registration fees, sponsorships, uh, also proceeds from uh, concession sales. Uh, and the sort of the piece about the Square app, is, so we use this, you probably all have dealt, you know, interacted with it at some point from some restaurant or something you've been to. The, it's a particular application that allows us to, you know, it's, Point of sale application square. Yeah. square. Yeah. So we yeah. use it now, um, but we only do cash. And yeah. in order to enable yeah. the electronic payments, it needs yeah. to be connected to a bank account. Yeah. So that's sort of the backstory on yeah. that piece of it. Yeah. And a lot cleaner. Yeah, way cleaner, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so the, the, those couple of priorities are intertwined in, in the cash receipts policy um, was identified as a need um, with Regina and Michelle. It was something that 
we needed to get sort of cleaned up, uh, and so we've worked with them over the last several weeks to come up with a, a sort of final proposal for that. So you're just going to use, is that a paper receipt, or what are you talking about, the cash receipt? Uh, so Electronic? The cash receipt's policy that I'm talking about. Oh, is, you just need the policy. Yeah, right. Basically okay. it just yeah. dictates, like, how is a recre recreation board going to handle yeah. funds that are, you know, changing hands with for the rec board business. Michelle said she can't hear us. I'm not sure. Is there... Oh, maybe I'm muted on that. Not sure. Oh. Oh. Muted on that. oh, Michelle, can you hear us now? Yeah, captions are working. So the basis for the new policy um, is the found existing cash policy, which is admittedly a little bit outdated. So we we amended that and adapted this to be just for the recreation board. So you should see some general similar, similar language and format, um, but with, you know, electronic payments with reference in Square and, and rec board members only. Oh, I'm sorry, are, are you suggesting um, amending an existing cash receipts policy for the recreation board or? The creation of a new policy that was only applicable to the recreation board, um, not amending the town's existing policy at all. Okay. What type of dollar? What type of funds are we talking about in a typical year? What how much money do you bring in? Ballpark. I'm just because I'm new to the select board, so uh, it's just only yeah. what four, five, six hundred thousand, maybe six thousand. <laughs> uh, okay. Across all programs, all concessions. I think okay. that's that's that, that, that's fine. I can say what time you have. Got to stop. Always in plain figures. Very done. Oh, okay, so I'm trying to be optimistic here. I was struggling. Yeah, we're going to go to uh... That's really realistic. <laughs> okay, thanks. And what happens to that money? I can't remember. The current money that we take in? Yes. Um, so for concessions money, it's um, a lot of a lot of checks, no checks, or really very, very, yeah. very few checks. Uh, they do a count at the end of the night. They drop in a safe. Yeah. They'll come by. I have the code of the safe and keys. Michelle has the code and keys. Yeah. Um, and then I will take the money, count it myself, attach any documentation from it. Right now we're using Square. All transactions run through Square, so there's a receipt and the reports we can run directly from Square as the support for the, for the deposit. Then I'll bring it into Michelle, who right now, unfortunately, has the recount. Um, and then she'll, then she'll make the deposit. Um, part of this, I think, is also adoption of a... Uh, and that money gets circulated back into just the town? That's where it goes. Yeah, and you go to the county. Oh, okay. Because I know that we pay the bills. It, it, it didn't used to be that way, but I know that the, we took over paying the bills. And so I just wonder where that fund wound up, that cash. Yeah, it all goes back to the general fund. It's okay. supported as a revenue. In, okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. sounds good. And so what problems would this uh, proposed policy solve? It would um, reduce the amount of actual physical cash cut. Um, ideally, I can bring the payment card, so I don't need to collect cash and bring it in. I mean, there's going to be some, there's going to be way less. Um, it also, again, with uh, it can do online registrations, can also be paid via card through the Square app. So again, people sign up for soccer, they write a check to the town, they hand it to a number of people, either at the town uh, the school, some people drop it at the town office, people yeah. bring it to me, some people bring it to coaches. Yeah. Collect it, count it, yeah. bring it here again, yeah. bring it account, and, and that instead it's just it's instant and it's you can count for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, I mean, we're going to be increasing revenue from concessions because a lot of people don't have cash. Yeah. Um, yeah, right. Yeah. So Square is your go to. And the good thing about Square is that they have the reporting as well yeah. that they can use, yeah. that Michelle will use, they will use as well. And why is a separate bank account needed? I guess to do Michelle like, just yeah. wanted it separate because it is linking into Square, so it's not going into the town's main account. Yeah. Okay, so Given what, we, what we've gone through, yeah, we just wanted to have that segregated. Yeah. That's going to meet all the uh, standards from our external auditors. I think you should make it back a lot better. Yeah. He, used to be, um, he used to work for uh, Sullivan Powers. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What is the break card? Is that one of the cases? Uh, 
what or it's 30 cents in two percent. 2.9% and 10 cents, or I think it's 30 cents. So it'll be less than 2% plus? Yeah, it's like 2.9% plus 10 cents per swipe. Oh, huh. wow. Yeah. But I looked at, you know, the numbers for concessions for last year, and I think, you know, honestly, what I think we'd make it up on, yeah. Yeah, on, volume. on volume. Yeah, because people, it's a lot easier to swipe that card and they actually hand over cash. So, so it's worth that reporting. It's better than Venmo, right? Eh? Because Venmo, you don't have to. No, okay. Yeah, you, know, you can start with yeah. Venmo, you can start with Venmo with accounts. Then you put it. You want to do the card. I know, I know. Yeah. But Venmo doesn't charge. That's a, yeah, right. It's a, you're right. Yeah. yeah, but it's a point of sale. You know? All right. Not eighty percent of these people are going to be there, and the other people are not going to have Venmo. Yeah. Well, I don't know. So how how will this I mean, change cash flow? How they're handled. So the well, you, know, you should jump in, but um. So the cash receipt policy details when, how, um, your expectations for the rec board for accounting for cash and recording. Um, but I would say generally, this initiative will just reduce the amount of cash changing hands uh, by a lot. But the way it changes hands will be the same as currently? Um, it'll, put, uh, it'll define timelines of when cash is turned over after an event. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right now, there isn't anything. It's just as soon as possible. Okay. Right. So what this says is... Um, no more than two business days from receipt of cash right. payments. Right. In general, this is, will help. You know, Michelle has worked with with them on creating this policy, mm -hmm. and also on kind of a sheet that they'll use to reconcile. Um, so it's it's been a great dialogue and conversation to get everybody on the same page. Probably something that hasn't really ever happened, or or hasn't happened in. The recent past at least so um it's it's really been a good process i think for everybody to go through and who will have access to this newly created bank account to be able to withdraw funds well michelle and i are the only signers on the account would that's, be the only signers on the account yeah, right. yeah. Yes. yeah no <laughs> yeah okay i think this will work do we need a motion for this i think mm -hmm. we probably do yes you can accept the policy as presented Record cash receipts and credit card you know, remittances, whatever policy. I believe the verbiage was to approve the policy as presented. I think so too. Yeah, I think this has much more concise. I go with I go with the uh, the, the, the verbal ladder. The recreation cash receipts yes. policy. Yes, I believe it would be mm. the proper verbiage. Okay, well, it is zero. Right. The, <laughs> the cash receipts. I mean, what's the you know, charge <laughs> also. But thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> I'll second that one. Okay. Oh, exactly. Whatever the hell it was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any more? Not by me. Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. 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 I have it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming Thank in. Thank you for taking the initiative. Thank you for doing all that work, actually. Okay. Have a nice rest of the night. Take care. Thank you. See ya. Um, What's that? We weren't chasing them away from this. Oh, we weren't? Stimulating. <laughs> she knows it, right? They meeting. Um, discussion on our of funding. Yes. So I can, I've given you a lot of information like I like to do. Yeah. I can summarize this. Essentially, the town can give money to nonprofits. Essentially, yeah. the way we have elected our ARPA funds gives the town the authority to spend money as you would. So if you would ordinarily authorize, you know, if uh, if Twin Valley came to you with a request, so we're, well, Four Corners, we have a real life example of it, right? Four Corners came, asked for $30,000 to help with an issue in that building and you authorize that spending. So just as you would do that on a regular basis, you can likewise use ARPA funds to do that as well. Right. And, and as soon as we cut the check to them, then we have authorized the spending and done the spending. And you're done. And we're done. So and you could have done that with that fire fire truck. Hmm. It's just written a check for the fire truck, the one you just talked about. The well, one, I mean, that goes to Capital Reserve, but yeah, I mean, well, technically no. you could. You could. Give them the 116 and then. Wouldn't have taken out of capital reserve. We saw all that money. For we certainly time. could. The select board can certainly choose to do that. That's right. And that's 160. It's a little off topic, but yeah. Well, no, it's a provision. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
-hmm. Yeah. But if you would like right. to open up opportunities for local nonprofits yeah. to right. then the question is how would you like to do that? Yes, well, that was a thank, relevant thank, thank right. you for that additional research yeah. and that has clarified the conditions uh, right. according to what I've understood we've already been told. But uh, if there's any question at all, then it needs to be double checked and I appreciate you doing that. Uh, Okay, so let's let's move forward to how we want to include the nonprofits because that was a question that Gina yeah. answered. Right. So how do we want to do that? We have already authorized, was it thirty thousand to four corners? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, we've already taken care of that. Right. You see so, hundred grand to so we does just, it make sense to fiber? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So well, those are the sorts of that's grants that we've already made. Hmm? That's a nonprofit. Not it's really. It's a municipality, no. so it is. It's a municipality, which is different than a nonprofit. No, it's not a nonprofit. Non 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 well, it is a nonprofit. No, <laughs> no, 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 profit is a five hundred one c three organization. That's okay, you two, stop fighting. I just want to move this on. <laughs> so, I would potentially we could either target an upcoming select board meeting, put a post on front porch forum. Yes. And I mean, if this is a question for you, do you want to state to East Montpelier? Nonprofit, like, you know, for example, yeah. and I know Jean Troya came to us yeah. probably well over a year ago at this yeah. point, came to the board with yeah. with some opportunity. I'm not sure if they still need support or not, um, but that would be one, you know, I don't even know how many organizations we have. I wouldn't want to just make calls because there could be one that I'm not aware of yeah. that lived that's in East Montpelier that we would not call. Twin Valley, we possibly could, considering they did come once and yeah. Yes. The board said, so yeah. I do think it would be fair to yeah. make a specific yeah. call to Twin Valley Senior yeah. Center for yeah. that reason. Um, oh, she's still there. Denise yeah. Wheeler would be the contact right yeah. now. Oh, Hila. Hila. It would be oh. Denise Wheeler right now. Yeah. Um, well, you could call them if you want. Yeah, so like I, that's why, because that yeah. organization Understood. already did contact Understood. the select board, but that's the only one that has specifically reached out. Otherwise, I think maybe a um, front porch forum post to say, hey, the yeah. It can be the next meeting if you want, or sure. it can be the first meeting in November, or whatever the case may be. By that date. Come in. I mean, we have time. It's not like this is necessarily directly tied to the budget cycle or anything like that. So mm -hmm. we have time for this. Um, but, you know, they could come and bring just like what Gene did. I think yeah. there were some spare, very specific things that I think they built now, but um, that they wanted to do that they were seeking funding for. There's so. a paving the parking lot. So was it the parking lot? Okay. Yeah, it was paving the parking lot. So, um, you it can reach be, out to them. Yeah. It has right? to be East Montpelier. And it has to be East Montpelier. Well, well let, I think you're raising that as a question. I think that's a, just a question worth discussing. What does yeah, even East Montpelier mean? Um, I mean, they have an address in East Montpelier, but uh, we also have a lot of people who are active in the Montpelier Senior Activity Center, a lot of people who uh, get books from the Keller Harbor Library, and we already assist those organizations. So do we want to make it broader? No. That's why, that's why we want to keep the money in the town, and we can decide anyway. Yeah. If someone comes and applies, and, can we uh, right. a central Vermont? We should give them money. They're based in they're based in Berlin. Who is it? Little place. I'm on the board of this. I, I chair it. My point is, I agree with you. Yeah, I'll have them come and ask for money. They're not from East Montpelier. Yeah, that's why I said that. Well, yeah, I, I have no idea what you just said, Scott. <laughs> in other words, I think it should be East Montpelier based. I understand the, the, the library, the Keller Hubbard Library, we all use, but it's not based here. Okay. So when so you're saying you're you're I'm against you're not you're against having community harvest in central Vermont to be able to yeah. So but let's advertise because active. we have the opportunity to vet, but we yeah. are, it is going to be a sponsor. That's why I think putting a post yeah. on front porch form, yeah. other people in other communities can technically see that post right. as well right. and word can get out. And if an organization comes, it's up to the select board it's absolutely where it say, goes. I, so I, right. you and hear bang, bang. what they're seeking what they're looking for. I mean, for we and... might come somebody might come with a really good mission that we oh wow, we didn't know about this. You, in the front porch forum um post, do you want to state East Montpelier based, yeah, because because we could get we could get thirty um, people showing up. What's that? Well, it does become a slippery slope, and keep in mind we are. I mean, I think it was thirty eight organizations. I already emailed out that we 
provide annual funding too. So yeah. it's it will start to get very complicated between this process and that process. That's right. my only concern about these happening right now because yeah. that's right. happening right yeah. now <laughs> at the Don't same want, time yeah. as this. So um, it may be good to maybe delay this just a right. little bit for that reason, if we can get past that October 20th deadline for those, uh, because then it will keep yeah. a line. I don't want organizations to get confused yeah. right. and write in for ARPA right. funding and then think they don't need to do that. Yeah. And then they're scrambling right. when I reach out to them and say, hey, you didn't send me an application. So I really don't want organizations to get confused. Right. Um, do it when you think fast. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. All right. So I'll I'll Make get up. past that October twentieth yeah. deadline of these, nope. yeah. and then target a November select board Perfect. meeting for. Yeah. Okay. And it, it should be East Montpelier based nonprofit. Okay. In my, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's the sign of the staff. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't have strong feelings on this. I'm mostly been. I just want to nail the field. Devil's advocate to, get to like, try to like, clarify like, things. Um, but so I'm, yeah, and we don't have to make a final decision now. We need to make a final decision about now is what yeah, sort of language you'll be using. Yeah. And I think, uh, I'm fine with saying, you know, East Montpelier based nonprofits. If we get language in for, or applications in from somebody else who claims we don't have an address in East Montpelier, but we serve you guys so much we're deserving, we can look at that. We aren't binding ourselves by that language. And, uh, two, I think we do need to, have some language about how much we might be giving out to each nonprofit and how much total we might be giving out in this program. Uh, we, again, we don't have to bind ourselves, but uh, you know, guidelines. And do you think you should do that? Yes, and so that people know whether to put in an application for a thousand bucks or thirty thousand bucks. And we should say, and that this is, we should be specific about this is not for ongoing operations. This is for special projects. Holy shit. I don't have enough time to write that ad. No, the, the special project, I, I just don't see the point of putting in, if they want to put something in for a million dollars, they'll put it in. Yeah, that's what I say too. We we have the opportunity to do it. I don't think want. it's helpful to to say, you know, do whatever you want. I think it's helpful to give guidance and say, this well, is how much we what want. What kind of guidance give. would you put in? I have no idea what these projects would be. Maybe it's something that's really valid for 25 grand. But I'm, I don't know what criteria you put in because I have no idea what the well, we have. Are. Well, we know it's not going to be more than however much is left in our uncommitted ARPA funds of you know, what is it, 450,000? If you want to and, an amount, it would probably be better for, I mean, Chair Gardner just made a comment this evening about a check that's in the warrant that you're going to look at in a little bit for $115,000 towards a fire engine. Mm -hmm. So we probably need to take another look at the ARPA funds. Mm -hmm. uh -huh discuss where we didn't really do that when we had that hearing we right. need to take a look at where we are yeah if if the select board would like to reclassify and assign those funds to arpa for the fire engine that's something we can certainly do mm -hmm. yeah. that will make a dent in the in easy, the remaining part of funds easy. and it may help guide Carl what you're saying of, of coming up with what is it is it fifty thousand yeah. dollars is it twenty thousand dollars what is the total bucket that the select board is comfortable saying that you would be willing to fifty thousand I'm not comfortable with anything I know I I I, I, know I, I, I I like big and I don't like the expectation of we're setting aside fifty thousand dollars and then we end up giving zero because we don't feel right. it's either valid or they're not really based here. They're kind of based here. And then you say, well, you said 50 grand and you're not giving any. Yeah. All right. You can say up to, that's very easy language to include. If I'm at a nonprofit and I'm going to put my effort into writing an application. They don't have to write an application, they just show up. I want to, uh, and if I'm going to put my effort into coming to a meeting on a darn Monday night, I kind of want to know, okay, what are we talking about here? Do I have a possibility of getting a thousand bucks or, or 30,000 bucks? And, and what are you looking for? Um, I, I think it's it's up to us to you know set some guidance saying this is the sort of thing that we're interested in funding. I don't want to fund uh, the, the salary of the executive director, for example, but I'd be happy to consider funding for emergency remediation of mold damage. Well, it does make sense because it would help narrow down applicants or and interest yeah. to be more specific. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> would you like sure. to review maybe at the next meeting where we are with ARPA, discuss, I can put some of these items on the table um we've thrown around ideas for example the emerald ash borer project we could just assume 
mm-hmm. twice the amount of that from last year. Uh-huh. We could, we know the $30,000 for four corners. I could put the fire engine on that list and we can kind of say, okay, here's what we have left. Here are some potential items that could be used or ARPA funds could be used to fund these particular items. And the select board can then make a decision because I'll need to know that decision anyway as we get into the first quarter of next year. But of, the of the, well, when I have to when I have to report to the federal government through March 31st, where I'm going to need to know the yeah. some of these answers anyway if the funds have been expended, similar to the fire engine. Um, so we you can start making those decisions. Well, what are the cons for putting the fire engine? Or using the fund for using the funds for the fire. No, no, we already voted. The townspeople already voted to give the fire department one hundred thirty-three thousand to put towards the fire engine. Right. But we could just take instead of taking the money out of the capital. No, I know. Account, what would be the cons of using our funds? There is. There is one. It just right. leaves so, the money in our it's, capital it's, reserve. It's all. It's all a shell game. Shell game. Right. Yeah. It's not the money. Yeah. yeah. It's not negative. It's, it's not available to go somewhere else. But it would. It would help our our capital. So we yeah, should do, so we should do that, right? Problem. Well, it depends. I mean, if if we think that we want to help a million dollar expansion at the Twin Valley Senior Center, and we want to say to townspeople, "Hey, we're taking this out of the federal ARPA funds," then we want to preserve as much of them as our left as we can. I don't think we want to do that. I just think but, we're not getting, not getting very many applicants. But no, anyway, seems like we should. We didn't. We'll see. See. We already had a hearing. We had nothing. I mean, we get people in front of that. Just seems like the time is running out, not and slowly no, no, to use the ARPA funds. But no, it's not. If, Given no, if, there's, no, if there's not a bad you reason, utilizing ARPA funds to pay for items that would have otherwise been charged to the capital reserve results in those funds being available for a future use yeah. now yeah. to support yeah. an organization. Bang, bang. bang. Correct. So we spent 133000 so money doesn't go so away. So why are we not buying the fire truck with our funds? Well, we just thought. No, we, I just thought. Yeah. It. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, this had a brainstorm. Ooh, click, click. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So what we could do is we could say, we're willing to give away $50,000. We have that money. I know we have it left. To a nonprofit or a couple of nonprofits or five nonprofits. Mm-hmm. So, so we'll set a fifty thousand dollar limit in the ad. Up to fifty thousand. Yeah, up to fifty thousand yeah, dollars available. Cheesy. The select I'll, order. I'll vote this. Okay. I don't think this should be a limit. I don't think we should have any, any expectation. I and, kind of agree with you. I'm just trying to keep okay. you know, I'm trying to find the middle road here. This is what some chairmen do. We don't have to always agree. Yeah, I mean, it can be much too. But I don't really like care. Board, Scott, I'm with you. I don't care. The select board envisions a fifty thousand dollar. But I'm just saying that if okay. it came so down I'm, I'm up to, yeah, if, if it came down to like push the shove, yeah. it'd be nice to keep that money in town or doing a yeah. highway garage. But you know, thinking about uh, townspeople that came to the hearing, then eh, you know, there's some. Talk about nonprofits, mm-hmm. so it's like oh, maybe we should dog, throw the dog a bone, so to speak, or you know, give away fifty thousand to a really deserving but nonprofit. Listen to the comment of, of wise constituents. Wow, uh, listen uh, to uh, consistent. Yes, that's all yes, I'm going to say. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to say. Not, I'm not throwing any dog bones. I'm listening to constituents. Who... Yeah, I'm listening to constituents. <laughs> I'm not saying anything about wisdom. <laughs> that's considering potentially allocating up to. Yes. No, yeah, I'm still voting yeah, against that. Right. I'll still vote against that's it. Fine. But, but that's the language I would use. I'm just if I was going to be in favor of it. Okay, yeah. sounds good. But. So, we, we don't need to make any decision tonight. We're going to look at new numbers at our next meeting and um, then make a motion at that time. Is that is that correct? That's fine. Okay. Without overburdening that's, that's, Gina that's, that's, with that's that. Okay. What's that? That's groovy. Yeah, that's groovy. <laughs> is, is it our next meeting that you're yeah, suggesting that? Yeah. Okay. I think it would be helpful. Sure. Sounds good. To see where we stand. All right. All right. We're almost on time. Town garage project update. We have pictures right here. This is a result of a couple of going up. Obviously, the one the one struck with the rig is is a new one for the public. The, the other the other little building that's going to remain intact. The one the building on the left. Yes. Yeah. Could, could we 
Could we maybe make the presentation? Oh, is the presentation? Yeah, yeah. Is there a presentation? Well, it says that Stefan and Carl are going to make the presentation. Well, I, I, think okay. we, I think we should tell. I think we're going to. I, I thought we'd probably put it up on the screen just so that other folks can see it. Well, I probably should talk about the yeah. wetlands meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Okay. Uh, spe so, speaking of which, um, that that was a ward meeting, even though we um, and we ended up having only two people come to it, but it was a ward meeting. Um, did, Gina, did you take the initiative to write minutes that we got together and there wasn't a quorum and put them up somewhere? Or should we no. do that? Okay. No. I, I think we need to do that. It okay. seems silly. But okay. uh, are you okay with doing that since yeah. it's you know, very perfunctory? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So um, Carl and I met with uh, Dory Arrowhead. Is it Arrowhead? Dory Wetland Service? Arrowhead Wetland Service. Yeah. And um, we didn't really, I wasn't clear about where the proposed garage was. I thought it was on the existing site in back, but it wasn't back, but it was up the town trail in the town forest, 600 something feet, which we didn't walk all the way up to. But as we're walking up there, uh, we called Guthrie and he told us what he was thinking, but there was no flagging done. And I wish there had been. Uh, but we walked out there and obviously it's a wetland. There's streams on both sides of us. There was huge pine trees that would need to be cut down. There was a road that would have to be built. The lady's like, what? Right. Yeah. And uh, I'm like, oh, I didn't know this was going to be out here. <laughs> I didn't know this was a proposed site. So anyway, she was kind of like, this doesn't look very good. So then we walked down the bank in the back of the garage and she showed me where we could expand the footprint a bit without going to the wetlands and she put up some flags mm -hmm. to show where the um where we could measure from mm -hmm. to bottom of the bank and gave us uh the standard for wetlands and measuring to the top of the bank of the stream and blah 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 yeah so um at the end of the conversation i was like well we'd like to see if we could fit it in on the existing site that would work a lot better yeah. May I make a slight addition to that? Sure. That is, um, Dory was was very professional in as a wetlands consultant, not uh, not telling us. Um, I don't think that this is a very good idea to put it out uh, way way back six hundred feet. Uh, but she did delineate the uh, the costs of and the difficulty of building a road back that far. Uh, she did later on uh, say, "Hey, look, I'm chair of the select board in my town." And I just want to say also that, uh, if I may, may say that, that uh, the townspeople in my town would not be happy about the town forest being built on for a town approach. So anyway, so then John and I and Guthrie and Gina went up and we came up with a different proposal, which is the red. You can see where the new garage would fit like that. And it seemed like that was a really good idea. And the requirement would be that we'd have to eventually we'd have to take down the current garage. Yeah, we got to take down the current garage. Well, construction is happening. Yeah. Yeah. And then the equipment would be stored where? The equipment would be outside for the summer. Yeah. But it would have to be done quickly. Yeah. Start you have to have a hard and fast construction gate, take down the old one. It's got to be taken down by April. 30th and start construction May 1st or something like that. Yeah. That's what I would do if I was doing it. And then uh, you could throw it up pretty quickly if you had everything lined up. There's some some opportunity potentially to use the um, existing fire department. Well, we own it, so right. we're already using Right, we, well, we're using two bays, but you know, our equipment doesn't really fit in there very no, well. No, trucks went very well. But it couldn't be, you know, base of operations, so to speak. Right. That's, if I was in a position to build that, that's exactly what I would do. That's right. what I suggested. Now, the other thing I think we should look at is, I don't know if ARPA money would do this, but we've got to take down that house so Guthrie's living in right now, and that's going to be expensive. Mm -hmm. So taking that down and cleaning up that site is going to cost a few bucks. So I don't know. That is something that has been on my radar for a Right, we've got asbestos yeah. in it, I think. And I think okay. that's really going to have it's, it's not yeah. going to be. It's not going to be. Is that ARPA qualified? I don't know. It should be. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, so that that's that expensive. Big. That's something we could probably implement right away to try to get an estimate and figure out who's going to do it. 
Um, and then we can look at that site to put an adjunct building on, which is what I'd like to do for the any equipment that's not being used in the, in the summer. We can store it there. Also, the um, sidewalk cleaners should go in there. Um, so there's an opportunity to really do something nice right there. We really have right. to keep that little tractor for the sidewalks here. Oh, no, we have to keep it there. <laughs> that's what we're doing right now. We have a little storage deal, but it'd be nice to put a nice building there. And the other thing I was going to ask the fire department is if it would be handy for them to have their truck or two stored down here rather than that building. Because that building's got some issues. The issue is septic, there's no water, blah, blah, blah. So eventually that building could go away if we could do something in the village here, and then we could use that for storage or use the building or use get rid of the building and use it for you know sand or sand pile, whatever. Well, the septic but, issue you mentioned in general with this plan is something we would likely need to address for the road crew to have. Oh, that of course has to be done. Yeah, it goes of, without saying. facilities to use during the mm -hmm. construction of their new. Oh yeah, so yeah, that's true. That is something that would be right. high on the list to have yeah. to be remedied. And a question for the fire department for using that building is, uh, you know, how how does moving equipment down here affect response time to Callis? Yeah, but they don't hardly use that equipment much. So I, I don't really know. I mean, are they, would they want to move their equipment, all their equipment down know. here? I mean, yeah. I, I don't know. It's a good question to ask them. I mean, they, they, they have had people who live closer to that garage. Yeah. than to this garage well, I know. and can be active and taking equipment quickly. Yeah, but that equipment, I don't, I don't think they are. hardly ever used that equipment, but I, I, I want to ask. Yeah. yeah, I want to ask. So I just think that as, as we move forward with the town garage, we need to also look at that building and also look at down here. So it's kind of a, you know, a whole, you know, whole yeah. whole plan that's mm -hmm. not just on that site. And I just want to mention that on, on this map here, the wetland delineations might be a little bit different than what was actually delineated by the um, consultant that we had by Dory. She was going by a map. Right. Yeah. And this is the map that's on the town tax yeah. tax map. So it's, yeah. um, anyway, it's theoretically, you're supposed to stay 50 feet back. So it's, um, first of all, you have to establish the top of bank for the stream. And then the wetlands start from that, and that and that goes until wherever. And then mm -hmm. wherever you put, uh, say, the marker, you measure sixty feet to give yourself enough room. And that sixty feet goes to the bottom of the bank that you say you fill. You have to measure from the bottom of the bank. So mm -hmm. it's a little tricky, and it's not just fifty. She said better go sixty just to give yourself some room. Right. I'm just just saying that. Yeah, I know. I don't know this, how. This I may not. This may not be. Yes, accurate. I so do. we'll have some. It's going to be flagged, yes. and we'll yeah. we'll know where we can site that yeah. that new garage um, as we move forward. Well, the new garage fits on the existing right, property, but yeah. you know, to give yourself a little bit more room. Yeah, if it was me, I'd put a little more fill as much as I could, give you more room to go around the building, right. and you know, blah blah blah. Right. That's the orange dotted line. The orange dotted line is a property that is the 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 lot that the town owns at that. Oh, oh, it's okay. a garage that's on. So they're both on both sides. It's town property. Right. Yeah. It's a town forest north of there. Yeah. Okay. And then where the garage is, I would assume where the fire department is, it's town property too, I would assume. Mm -hmm. So that's all town property. Well, yeah, we own that building. But it's just a lot. Gosh. Gotcha. Yeah, we own the building. Yeah. Would we still engage Dory to do a wetlands delineation to know exactly how far we can go with this or no? Is it unnecessary? It is unnecessary. Okay. We don't need a state permit. We don't okay. need Act 250. All we need is a town permit. And we're not we're not going to increase the amount of imperviousness that's there because um, basically you may extend the bank a little bit to make sure you've got plenty of room to turn it. Sure. Yeah. 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 So with with that proposed location, it does cross the dotted yellow line that we just talked that's about. My next and, yeah. So yeah. I don't know whether we would need to do a boundary adjustment with the town forest lot or whether we can you know, just say, yeah, it's all our land. Well, we're already crossing it and in, in actual operations, we're already cross that line because we drive on that property all the time. So right. essentially, it's, I don't know if it makes any difference. Well, the thing about it is if we have to get a town permit, we can invest in that. But we probably should invest in that. Because we do have to have it. We have to look at the zoning regulations. I would to, think you wouldn't want a building crossing. A 
What, what's that? I don't. I wouldn't think you would want the building crossing no. a property yeah. line. I would think you would want the building solidly on a piece of property. Yeah, but maybe doll, go ahead and do doll, just a dollar line. It's that's a, a parcel line. delineation. But we own the property boundary, right? Yeah, right. right. So it, it would be it, was, so it would be a boundary line adjustment if it's necessary. And I, no, don't, I don't know. If it's, theoretically, it's contiguous. So it's all. And I'm not piece. sure that we even need the town for us. I guess we probably do. But we got to look at the zoning regulations. We talked about sure that. Work. Can Besides, anyone, listen, what are the questions if you build it? Okay. Properties all owned by one. Yeah. Yeah. Same landowner. <laughs> and it's contiguous. Yeah. Right. It's something we probably should have, have a quick chat with the town forest committee about. Yeah. Well, they won't know. You have to zoning just, administrators. You guys just let them know that, um, hey, we've been, <laughs> the uh, town forest lot has been improperly delineated for a while. Uh, this isn't really being used as town forest, and we're going to make a definite boundary adjustment. I don't know. It just seems clean if the same sorts of activities are on the same lot. And then we've been encroaching upon it for decades. Yeah. yeah. And they say no. Tough shit. Well, anyway, that's I, the I, track that? that's the proposal that yeah. it seemed like it would work. Mm -hmm. So doesn't seem to be very we're gonna move ahead. So what we'll do is to do the RFP. So would you like me? I have not reached out to Kathleen yet. Yeah. That's latest information. So I can reach out to Kath Kathleen, ask her to revise her draft based on this new information. Yeah. And then circulate that to the yeah. two of you yeah. and Guthrie and yeah. get feedback. And we can hopefully bring then a proposed RFP for right. then the select board to review mm -hmm. yeah. prior to. ASAP. Any publication. Now, the only other caveat is Andy Shapiro and somebody responded. Yeah, so Andy Andy wrote, did I, I, he write I, everybody? Oh, he wrote you as well. Yeah, so okay. Andy, you, you want to go present it? Oh, I don't care. Yeah, so and, Andy wrote to uh, Seth and me and yeah. um, and said, hey, how would you like me to participate with the town garage activities uh, I'm offering on behalf of the Energy Committee? Uh, to participate on a volunteer basis, to be on the uh, garage building committee and assist with all aspects of getting it designed and built that are in my realm of expertise. And he points out that um, the sooner that someone with an energy perspective gets involved, the better. And, and I, I read this and then I looked at this picture and I thought, I wonder if he uh, would have had useful comments about the orientation of the building from an energy perspective, uh, for example. Um, Probably he would have bowed to the site constraints um, because I remember him uh, consulting on my house, uh, which is oriented with a short end towards the south and saying, we, we can make solar work even with a short end um, oriented to the south. Uh, but at any rate, uh, the sooner the better. And his top qualifications for the uh, design team would be familiarity with high performance buildings, with town garage facilities, not being attached to a fancy look unlike the fire station, and enough horsepower and time in their schedule in-house to get it done in a timely way. So if he wants, uh, if we do want this participation, he needs to be kept abreast of what's going on and what will be going on. So okay. this gets back to then likely a committee would need to be formed. I think we decided that, you know, if we had a town employee who was you know, contacting other townspeople that... That's not going to be efficient. I do not have time to do that. Okay, so let's just wait. We're going to meet with Kathleen Jen, right? You and I. Yeah, we can. Probably but she wants to, there. if yeah. we, if Gina sends a message that we're ready to do the RFP, then she can draft up something. We'll meet with her. Mm -hmm. And then we can have Andy also. He can help with the RFP if he so chooses yeah. just to get the energy yeah. uh, language mm -hmm. correct in the RFP. And then we'll just go from there. Mm -hmm. And we'll have him involved in, in the RFP and just see what happens. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's what we should do. I mean, we can just meet with him and send him an email. So he'll be yeah. in the loop on all the RFP processes, and then well, we'll see. We'll see how he responds to that idea mm -hmm. of him being involved in the RFP. Because I'm, I'm not. I don't want to drag it out where he's gonna do. I don't know what he's gonna do, but. The challenge did, is also going to be when we then engage the architect. Yeah. This is where a committee yeah, well, comes into play. What we're describing of having a town employee be the one to communicate with a bunch of people, go back to a contractor, get information, communicate with them. It, it's it's that does that is not the way you run a project like this. 
That's where your committee becomes your project team. That is, that is the group that's working directly with. So all stakeholders need to be involved. Having one person run around and ask questions, I've never in my life, and I've been a part of a lot of construction projects, seen them run like that. So we can't, you don't think we should have Andy involved with our No, I'm saying if what we're describing, there needs to be a dedicated team oh. that are the people that are facilitating these communications. And that's where I think the okay. committee, potential committee came up into play. Yeah, they could have done something to do that. Yeah. Team. yeah. Okay. Well. It just it, all depends on how we want to go. Otherwise. It seems like if we. He said, she said, talking to this person, talking to that person, it's, it's not going to work. Okay. Okay. So it's not going to work. All right. No, I thought that's what you were proposing. That he would. I'm proposing that we meet team. with Andy and yeah. John and I and yeah. get the RFP going. That's yeah. all my proposal. Yeah. So you you guys work yeah. on getting the RFP going. Yeah. Andy is an equal part of the conversation. Yeah, and we'll just see how that goes. Uh, and then it will come to the select board. For, and for well, what's going to happen is the RFP will go out and we'll have response. And and if Gina doesn't want to be part of that, then they can it's respond not to John. Really and I. Right. What Carl was describing was Gina's going to come and bring things to the select board, talk to you. Going to have to call Andy and ask him his. No, no, no. You don't. And anybody else? When we've had conversations, that's that's, 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 that's not what I was suggesting. That's not what I yeah. did either. It's yeah. like yeah. if you're that's busy, how I, I, I realize you're busy. And that we can handle the email too. Yeah. It's simple. Yeah. Either one of us can do that. We'll get him here when the uh, when Carolyn Gent has the time to meet with John and I and mm -hmm. Andy. We'll yeah. get the RFP fleshed out and we'll get it out there. Mm -hmm. And I no, I think that should work. Yeah. No. Yeah. Andy's going to be gone. Gone until October eighteenth. Does that put a crimp in the timeline? No, I don't think so because. Okay. If, if, do you want one of us to get in touch she, with? Well, I was going to let you know? her know where yeah. we are today, yeah, just right that we are going to stay on yeah. the same site. I would send her this map. Yeah. And really, yeah. where the building is going to be located is the fact that we're keeping it on the same site is yeah. the key. Um, well, but that, that does change things dramatically. It helps a lot because you've already by the road. You've got the electricity there. You've got everything there. It's a lot cheaper and easier. But she needs to be hearing from Andy before she does any further work on the RFP, I would think. Yeah, well, I think I that was, I, has in there. She has a, some language in there already. That was all stuff that think, Guthrie and I really were things that we were mentioning to her. I don't want so, to get more to the language you just said. You said um, that um, was provided by Andy. Yeah. Well, I think if Carolyn Gent comes with us with Kathleen. Kathleen comes with us with her RFP, and then we sit down. No, we have it already. Yeah, we already have it, right? She sent us one? No, oh, okay. So we'll we just send that. I don't think I have. We have a very detailed already. She It, it wasn't really ready for <clears throat> consumption <throat> by the select board yet. I sent it to you. Send it to, send it to, oh, you know, you I sent it to you, to John. Again, this is where... And it gets sticky when we start getting three people on the select board involved. So yeah, somebody, <laughs> anybody on this select board can read anything they want to read. If we want to send a copy of that RFP. Oh, yeah, to, that's uh, fine. Carl, to Carl, Carl yeah. can read it. Yeah. Andy yeah. can read it. It doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you read it and you come back and get some suggestions, so what? You got some suggestions. It's right. not like we're all having a meeting and talking about it. So right. suggestions come through and it gets changed. Yeah. Oh, but I forward to you. You don't have it yet. Right. Right. I've got a new and, and then have, and then have if Andy yeah. wants to look at it, make some comments, let him do it. Yeah, well, I'll make him feel good. If he's, he's got really something in his hand. So he won't be here? When's he leaving? He, uh, no, he already left it. He's, he said on Friday that he would be out of town starting today and, uh, until October 18th, but reachable via phone, text, email yeah. for the next three days. You send him an email to No, he's not reachable anymore. Oh, no. no, for three days he was uh, reachable. And oh, he, I see. He replied to an email today, but I think the three days are probably over. That's fine. Then wait till eighteenth. Yeah, yeah. So we've already got an RFP from Kathleen. Yeah, so, we just yeah, take the draft right, right now. So okay. you guys will send, one of who will send that to Andy and me. You have it, right? Well, yeah, I can send it to you. I don't, yeah. I don't have Andy's email. I don't. Okay. Think. No, but he he's got it, or yeah. I've got it. Just send it to you because I'm leaving actually for okay. a few days, so unfortunately, and I'm getting up early in the morning to go to work. So okay. it'll slip through the cracks and give it to me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
I get up at five so I can finish the work I didn't get done tonight. They had to come to the meeting, but that's that's okay. Um Okay. Okay. All right, so that sounds good. Um what's the next thing? Monthly financial reporting package. July twenty third, August twenty third. We have to lie. August is not ready. Yeah, until okay. We have to go live right here. Correct. Um, what do we have? So it's really just one month of the current fiscal year activity. Oh yeah, so just be July. Hard to tell much. Yeah, there's not a whole lot yet. Yeah. First month out. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen any uh, red flags, Gina? No, not yet. Okay. Obviously, budget process will be starting very soon, though. So, yep. what's that? Budget process yeah, will be starting yeah, yeah. very soon. Well, right. I've already started the files, but yeah, we're not going to shut down the government here. <laughs> you never know. You never know. That's right. Yeah. Um, I might want to share. Oh, sure. Of the legislature, not of the East Montpelier legislature. Oh. At the general legislature? Well, oh, we'll make you speaker. Wow. I'm going to take that. <laughs> speaker of the select board. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, no red flags. Everything okay. It's kind of fairly reasonable. Like it's, yeah. We're going to start making a lot more money very shortly. Yes. Yep. Anybody have any questions before we move on? Okay. Hey, one quick question. What, um, yeah. What's happening with the um, the real estate tax situation? We told you that, that you know those that are behind tax sales. Oh, yeah. 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 Demand letters. Right. Has anybody seen Jesus yet? Or not that I've heard. No, I think those letters just went out. And... Yeah. 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 Okay, will I move to the warrants? Sure. Okay. October 2nd, 2023 expense warrant. Oh. Okay. So that's to check the 115 925. Do we want to write that check or what? Can we reimburse us? We can move. We yeah. Can move the money wherever we want. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Or move the expense wherever we want it. To yeah. Be. Washington County Sheriff. Please. Short warrant. Not much here. It is ten to All right, and we had one addition to the agenda addition that we haven't it's, done yet. So VLCT, this is our passive our insurance renewal. Yeah, they sent that email on Friday. Um. Friday afternoon, actually. So it's due though October 13th, which is before your next meeting. Yeah. So I've already started working on filling out the temp the forms online because they have an online way to submit. So I've just provided you what they sent me. Essentially, there will really be no change. The only thing, because all of our new ve vehicles are obviously already insured and already included on the list that they sent for this renewal period, mm -hmm. even though they weren't on last year's, of course. Um or actually that would have just been the 2024 max. Um, the only thing really that I will end up tweaking is I'll look at the salary numbers that they have in on their workers comp sheet and I will adjust those to match actuals essentially. Um, that's really kind of the only thing that we tweak from a year over year basis. We didn't add any covered bridges or add any buildings or you know anything. And like I said, if we had, they technically would already be included in this renewal documentation mm -hmm. because we would already have them insured. 
So, um, so they're going, they're, they're, the, the league is just estimating what the 2024 numbers are going to be. It's, it's yes. Just, and I, you, you're going to oh, make them correct. Correct. Yeah. I I've already adjusted them. I yeah. was just doing all that before we walked into this meeting, but obviously I, I'm not done with it. So I couldn't give you the, here it is updated, but I have to turn it into them before the 13th. So last year I was able to give this to you guys and it's kind of completed form. Sorry. So I move to authorize the town administrator to upstate sign and submit the renewal application for the VLCT passive membership program. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 That passed. Very motivated select board all of a sudden <laughs> as it approaches the witching hour. <laughs> uh, town administrator report. It's really short. There's been one zoning application since your last meeting, but it was a curb cut that came in on, I think it was Friday. Um, so you will see that at your next meeting because the road foreman has not yet had an opportunity to even review it. Okay. But that's the only thing that came in. I have a question. Oh. Uh, on the sale permit report yep zero chickering road right i was wondering about that too when it's a uh curb cut they don't have an address yet so, it's not so zero is uh i didn't give you the interest there's so many well i was looking for you but i noticed that it was but it's piped up and gave you the answer yeah good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 very good one very yeah. concise awesome. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else on the town administrative report you'd like to go into no okay um at a business hey okay, we're right on time folks we're five minutes early actually hmm? hail to the chief you guys uh, want to get out of here that's a problem. well we're thinking it is i i took it at that i would like to make a motion you would to adjourn um tonight's uh meeting of the select board for monday october 2nd 2020. <laughs> Um, is that permanently? Do we have a second on that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did? Oh my god, awesome! So we seconded it. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I was the favorite place. Uh, I, 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 uh, thank you for coming in.